today I'm in Melbourne CBD standing in front of a very special sign. The reason that I'm excited about this particular sign is that it's one of the few left anywhere in the city which still has these markings in the bottom right hand corner. They are in fact remnants of Melbourne's postal district numbers, which today we know as postcodes. So what are these and what do they mean? Let's find out in today's video. Using letters and numbers to identify different geographic areas for delivering mail is a relatively new idea. As the world's population rapidly increased and urbanised throughout the 19th century, postal delivery became more complicated. There were simply more streets and properties in larger and larger cities, which made it difficult for deliveries to find the correct destination. This was the case in Victoria until surprisingly recently. In 1923, the Postmaster General's Department of Victoria introduced a plan that divided Melbourne into postal districts, indicated by a seemingly random number. In just a few years, the number of districts had rapidly expanded from just 12 to 55, Pasco Vale being the last one added before the end of this system in 1928. This was when the Postmaster General's Department decided on a different method of classifying different areas. Rather than just relying on numbers, it would use a combination of letters and numbers that was based on London's postal district system. The first letter would indicate the direction from the General Post Office, while the number would show the distance. For example, Box Hill was given the postal district number of E11, showing that it was 11 miles east of the General Post Office. 99 of these were initially created across the city, with many places that today are considered as separate suburbs sharing a single district. For example, Burwood and Burwood East. This system was in place for many decades, but it did begin to encounter some problems as the city rapidly expanded. Because there was a lot of overlap between different suburbs in their distance and direction, it was sometimes hard to use because a single number had to be used across large areas. It resulted in confusing situations where up to eight different suburbs shared the same postal district. As a result of all this, in 1967, the Federal Postmaster General decided to introduce a standardised system right across Australia. At the time, different states and different cities were using completely different systems, so this made a lot of sense. You may have seen many pit covers and other infrastructure stamped with the letters PMG. Well, this was the same department. This was just one year after the decimalisation of Australia's currency, and was part of this broader program to standardise and reorganise systems around Australia. The PMG department implemented the system that we are familiar with today, using four digit numbers to indicate different areas. The new postcodes were rolled out very quickly, and within just a year, more than three quarters of Australia were using the new system. This was used as an opportunity to amalgamate or otherwise tidy up some of the smaller suburbs and localities across Melbourne. For example, Barker was incorporated into Hawthorne, Castlefield into Hampton, and Robinson into Braybrook. Many of these names live on today, just not as official suburbs. There are heaps of schools, medical centres, shops, and other places that use these names as a local reference point. So this all brings us back to this street sign right behind me, and hopefully you can see where this is going. I'm standing at the corner of St Patrick's Alley and Little Bourke Street, and this has one of the few markings left of any street sign in the city, which still has these old postal district numbers on them. And as you can see here, this is one of the few street signs left with the marking C1 on it. These are the earlier postal district numbers that we talked about from 1928. The C means central, and the 1 is the distance from the general post office. Almost all of these street signs are now gone, but a few of them like this one still survive. I don't know if this is just by accident or if they have some kind of heritage value. Nevertheless, I think a lot of them should still be preserved as a nod to this important part of Melbourne's history. As an added bonus, you can also see some newer street signs with the four digit number postcode still on them. This one behind me at Fleming Place off Little Collins Street is one of those left behind. So as you're out and about around Melbourne, make sure you keep one eye on the street signs because you never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and would like to see more, please subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date on future videos. Also feel free to visit my website at philipmalice.com. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.